Let's walk through how to insert an Impella CP. So either you're gonna be starting with an existing access, so maybe you already performed PCI, you're putting it in after, or you're making a new access just for this if you're doing it like in combination with a high-risk PCI and it's going to have its own access point. So either you're going to have like a five French, six French sheath in already, or you're going to need to just get access with a five or six French. I suggest a six French because you're gonna to have to dilate up um, and that could be really helpful. If you're unknown on whether they have peripheral disease or not, may, you might start with a micropuncture and just take a quick little angiogram to check the size of the femoral artery. This can be done axillary, but we're gonna talk about femoral. Then you're gonna get the 035 J tip stiff wire. So you're gonna have the circulator, if you're the scrub, open for you the access kit first, because if we can't get access, then there's no point in setting up the pump. So get the access kit first. There's an 035 J tip stiff wire in it. If you lose it for some reason, you can use an Amplatz wire as a substitute. And then there are dilators in there. So there's eight French and 10 French, for example. You're gonna dilate up, so we're exchange, remove your six French, insert the eight French dilator, insert the 10 French dilator, and then you're gonna insert the 14 French peel away sheath. Some physicians do just go straight up to the 14 French. That's just not what is in the instructions for use. Then you're gonna insert the 14 French peel away. So you're gonna know, notice the dilator has a covering on it because there's lubricant on the dilator so that the lubricant gets inside of the 14 French sheaths to help facilitate delivery of the device later on. So if you take off that cover, just make sure you don't take like a wet one and wipe off all the lubricant you want it on it to be able to insert it into the sheath. Now, after you've inserted the sheath, you're gonna wait, depending if this is an emergency or not, and anticoagulate. And you wanna make sure that you get the ACT therapeutic 250, 300, whatever ACT machine you have before you remove the dilator. And the reason is it's a large sheath. And once you remove the dilator, if you're waiting for pulling ACT or you haven't given heparin yet, let's say, or angiomax yet, then all of that stagnant blood in the sheath is gonna coagulate and it's gonna take you a while to clear that out later on. So just leave the dilator in until that they are actually ready. And then you can remove the dilator when the ACT is therapeutic you're going to remove the stiff wire with the dilator because now we need to cross the aortic valve and we're not gonna do that with a stiff wire. Then you're gonna get a regular 035 wire that you have, 150, 180, 210, 260, whatever you want, and an angled pigtail or catheter of choice, some people use a multi-purpose, doesn't matter, to cross into the left ventricle. So think of this, so far we've just done a sheath exchange and now we're gonna cross the aortic valve. Once you've crossed, you wanna position in the mid LV cavity. Some do a little shallower in the LVOT. You just wanna make sure it's clear and free of any of the papillary muscles because wherever this catheter is, is where the impella and the new wire is going to go. So you wanna make sure it's free and clear early on. Up next, we want a wire exchange. So we need to exchange the 035 wire from our pigtail with the 018 wire in the impella kit. And that's because the impella goes over an 018 wire. What if you lose the 018 wire in the kit? You can use a V18, that's one of the peripheral 018 wires. You can use that, um, just make sure it's long, over 260 or longer. So then you're gonna remove the pigtail over that wire. So you exchange out the 035, you have the 018 in, you walk out the pigtail over the 018, and then you're gonna aspirate and flush the sheath because remember, we it's a large sheath, so you probably have clot in it, and you don't want that clot to get into the impella when we insert it. Now on the impella prep side, you should have already turned on the AIC, the little console that rolls in, because this is gonna walk you through steps of the prep of the catheter, and then you're gonna hand off your purge cassette and power plug, which comes in the in the impella catheter kit that you can open now to the circulator so that they can set those things up in their purge fluid. You're gonna have a yellow connection. You're gonna connect yellow to yellow. There's a yellow port on the impella catheter to the yellow port from the purge fluid. Then you're gonna follow the prompts on the screen. It's going to flush and purge through that. Now we're going to make sure that purge fluid is actually exiting the end of the catheter. We see that drip on the table. And then you're ready to insert the impella over the 018 wire. So now remember we aspirate and flush the sheath before we're getting, and we're ACT over 250 or 300. You're gonna take that impella, there's a red lumen temporary lumen, you're going to insert the wire over that lumen. And that's there because you can, if you accidentally pull that out, find a way to insert it properly so that it's on the inner side of the cannula, but it's just to facilitate it so that you can get it through the proper windows. 
And then you're gonna see that wire exit the back end of that red lumen and there's gonna be a little flag so that it reminds you to remove it. So then you're going to remove the flag off of the wire. You don't need it anymore. Now you got it through the ports correctly. And now you're gonna aspirate and flush that sheath. Really make sure there's no clot in there because once you put the impella in there, if there is clot in there, you can get it inside one of the windows and then it won't work. So make sure you do that properly. And then you're going to pin the wire. It's a monorail system. And you're going to insert that into the left ventricle. Then you're going to remove the 018 wire when the physician feels it's in a good position, has removed some of the slack. And once the wire is removed, you can turn on the impella on the console. The circulator will do that because it's not sterile. And it will warn you and ask you, did you remove the wire? And you click yes, and then you can start to turn that on. I just wanted to take a minute and review some of the important things with equipment that I actually have. So first of all, I wanna talk about the sheath. There is a newer sheath out as well for single access because some people, sorry, <laughs> some physicians choose to do their PCI through the existing peel away sheath. So there is one that is meant to better facilitate that. You are gonna have some sheath options a little longer for tortuous anatomy, especially if you have hostile iliacs, and then the shorter one if you prefer that. Now. What I talk about is this 14 French dilator. So this is for the Impella CP. You're going to have different sizes for some of the different devices. But the 14 French dilator will come separate just like all the other sheets you have to build. It'll have a casing on this because there's lubricant in it. And what it is meant to do is when it's inserted into the peel away sheath, the lubricant gets in the sheath. So then when you remove it and you insert the Impella, it goes in a little easier. Um, so that is just something to consider because when you take it off, you're gonna go, oh, what is all of this? Get a wet gauze, try to wipe it off. Don't do that. Leave it on it, please. Then the peel away sheath, this is rather large. So I talk about flushing it quite a bit and not just aspirate and push forward. I mean, aspirate, waste on a gauze, look for a clot. If there is clot, you need to keep doing it until it is clear and 100% immediately before you insert the impella into it because what's going to happen, let me get one here, is when you insert this into here, there is the inlet and the outlet and they are windows. So the clot can get in the windows and that's where you get the impella stop alarms from, which we do not want because they're very hard to resolve once there's clot already in there because you can't really forward flush through this. So that is the sheath. The other thing I wanna talk about is all of this on the back end of the catheter because when it comes out of the package, it's actually going to come a little further on the shaft. And for you as a scrub person, what needs to be part of your initial prep, I should probably talk about this. There is a locking part that locks onto this repositioning sheath, which is what this is. You're using the 14 for insertion. This is the one that you leave behind if you're leaving it in the patient. So this completely disconnects the swan dome, as we say, or the clear cover. There is a locking mechanism here, so it fully spins off and you can disconnect it if you do it a little too much and that's fine, just reconnect it. But you have to loosen it in order to move this. What it's meant to do after the case is when you tighten it, it kind of pins onto the catheter so you can't move it. So please make sure you fully loosen the back one and the front one so that you can pull the repositioning sheath back so you have more of the shaft to work with. Because if you have a tall patient, you're probably going to use all of this from ephemeral access. And if you're repositioning sheath like it is when it comes out of the box, is all the way up here, and you go to insert into the sheath and the physician's like, what is this? Then you're struggling, right, to unlock all of this and pull it all the way back. So just do that in the beginning. So it's all the way back by the red plug. Now, this is what I'm talking about when you connect yellow to yellow, but first, what do I hand to the circulator? So this one comes pre-connected. If you're in another country, these probably should have been rotated out by now, but before you had to plug in the power cord yourself to the red power plug, but it should come pre-connected. And you're gonna have this plug part, which plugs into the AIC console. So you need to hand this to the circulator, but don't just toss over all of it. Toss over just enough so that they can plug in, but you still have slack because you need some of that to be sterile on the sterile field. So just hand over and pay attention to what they're getting. And it is a little heavy. So if you toss it all over and you're not holding onto the catheter, the catheter is gonna go with it. So just hand them a little bit, 
help them set that up and make sure you keep enough slack. The purge cassette. They need this to spike their heparinized saline bag. They need this to go into the AIC. So you're gonna hand both of these to them. You're going to undo this one so that you have a ton of slack because you need it because you're gonna connect this yellow when the fluid comes out to this yellow, okay? A yellow to yellow connection. Now, when you are, I would probably do it when you're done, but if you want to do it at the beginning, you can. This is a little latch that latches onto this. And the reason for this, this wasn't always a thing. The reason for this is because what would happen bedside, or sometimes if you have a really long case, there's a little port here, and if it bent, completely like this and kinked, that purge fluid would have high pressure. So it's good to latch on here and it just prevents this from kinking if you're if it's under a towel and you're not paying attention to it. So then when it is all set up and inside of the body, if you are leaving it in the patient, that is where the repositioning sheet is going to come into play. So now you wanna loosen these a little bit so that you can pull it up. You can just deal with the sheath itself if you don't wanna do the, the clear cover part yet. But what you're going to do is you need to take out the peel away sheath. So the proper way to take out a peel away sheath, I know we don't use these a lot in the cath lab, but it's a two man process. So somebody needs to hold pressure. Someone needs to fully walk this out. Like you're walking out a catheter over the wire. You have the catheter pinned. You're walking this out of the arteriotomy either fully or about halfway, then you break it and peel it. But if this was my insertion point, what I don't wanna do is peel into the arteriotomy. I want to fully walk this out completely, break it, peel it away, or if you, again, are kind of running out of shaft room from where this is, you can do half, break, peel, walk, 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 fully out, and then break away the rest. You don't wanna peel into the arteriotomy because that's where you start to get all of the oozing and the issues because you're causing trauma in the vessel. You wanna fully walk it out for the best case scenario, break it, and then walk this forward, okay? Pin and walk, pin and walk, pin and walk. Then you can pin back here, push this into the arteriotomy, flush with the blue. We don't want any of this to go into the vessel because notice this kind of tapers out. So we wanna just hub it. Now, my catheter is not pinned to anything, right? So if I pull it, the catheter is going to come out. So then you're going to pin this, get your clear cover, again, two-man job, <laughs> get your clear cover, because I'm one person. You want to lock this into the sheath, so you have a locking mechanism, turn to fully lock. Now remember, this twisted, right? So right now, when it's loose, I can pull this catheter out. So I want to fully tighten that. So that's lock one, lock two, and then that back end has lock number three. And when these are all fully connected, one, two, and three, you shouldn't be able to pull out the catheter unless the sheath comes out. And then you're gonna suture the sheath just on the front wings because you're probably gonna have this angle of insertion that you wanna keep. Do not push this down. Because when you push this down, look what happens to the sheath inside the arteriotomy. That's where you get oozing from. So keep the natural point of insertion. Stack some gauze under there if you need to. Just suture the front wings for forward pressure. And then you don't want to tegaderm any of this because you'll get little holes in it. So we have the diamond tegaderm that you need to cut two triangles in and overlap here so the insertion is covered and all of this is free. Because bedside, what happens is if it needs adjustment, they're going to un to loosen this so that they can move the catheter. And if you put all the tegaderm on it, and then they rip all the tegaderm off and it compromises the sterility, that's a problem. And then you're done.